So what determines the value of a security? What makes this Apple's stock price to go from $230 all the way down to $145? Why do we pay $230 and then we end up paying $142 for the same stock? within the course of four months. Why do we change our mind and all of a sudden we pay uh, $145 to a stock that we used to pay $230 a few months before? So let's talk about a, 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 the simplest of investments, a, a bond. Um, current price and then future receipt, if you will, right? or perhaps we should say future cash flow. So with a bond, you know, you're gonna receive the face value at some time in the future, let's say $1,000. What are we willing to pay for this now? That's the main question, isn't it? So let's say that at the end of this year, we're gonna receive $1,000. How much are you willing to pay now? Let's say the price is $900. So what we did is we generated ourselves a net income of a hundred dollars that's a thousand dollar that we're going to receive and the nine hundred dollars that we're paying right now and that's a hundred dollar of a net income what is the net return well the net return is the hundred dollar income that we generated using the nine hundred dollar investment that we made and that's an eleven percent of a net return now if we pay more obviously we're going to have a net income that's less we are investing in nine hundred and fifty dollars we're going to receive the same $1,000 in the future, and our net income is $50. Our net return is $50 income that's generated using the $950 that we invested initially, and that's a net return of 5.26%. Now, based on this example, every investment is priced the same. We, as the investors, we have some money, and we want to earn an income. We want to generate a return. So everything compares to our basic uh, bond example. If we are investing in a U.S. Treasury, where we have uh, short-term U.S. Treasuries, where we have no risk, then we're going to earn very little. In fact, we might end up paying $998, where we earn you know, a mere $2 a year, and then which is 0.2%. Uh, perhaps... With a little bit longer maturity, we could earn a $10 income and a net return of 1%. Now, everything, again, everything compares, measures up to this. So, for instance, if you're going to invest in an equity, how much are we going to make? See, with a bond, the future is certain. We are going to receive the future value of $1,000, and this is what we're paying. Now, if there's a risk of whether we're going to receive this money or not, called the default risk, then obviously how much you are willing to pay for this right now is going to decrease. So if you're talking about the short-term U.S. government treasuries, then the unlikely default will be priced in very little. However, if you're investing in an XYZ company that, that has a very high, so for instance, California, um, utilities company which just filed for bankruptcy they still have bonds floating and they are trading i assume somewhere around this level or perhaps even more uh we have argentina for instance who uh filed for bankruptcy twice in in their history uh as far as i remember and um and and nowadays they seem to sell at around um 10 percent uh on their 30-year bonds 10 percent a year so Based on the risk of default, the price that we pay today will determine how much return we earn because our future cash flow is what it is, the $1,000. Now, with an equity, we have a little bit more uncertainty. So let's take a look. If we are talking about the same example that we had with Apple, if you look at Apple's earnings per share, let's pull up Apple. So if you look at Apple right now, it's trading at 178.97. So it's 
type it up just like we did with a bond, right? So we pay 178.97, and what we're earning now is earnings per share, 11.89. Now, this 11.89 is your net income, personally. So that's your 11.89. Now, based on the payout policy, the company may not pay the entire 11.89 dollars to you, the shareholder, all in all as a dividend or in any in, in any means, and they may actually keep significant portion of it or all of it as retained earnings. However, this is yours. 11.89 is your earnings per share. Now, you paid 100 or you're paying $178.97 for this as of today, and this is what you earn. Now, the usual PE ratio in this case, in my opinion, is a little bit misleading. So instead of the PE ratio, I just want to focus on EP ratio. So what I want to do is I want to take the earnings per share and divide it by the current price to give you a comparable. Uh, percentage return on your investment. So this earnings per share, 1189, corresponds to a 6.64% return on your investment. Now compare this to Argentina that pays 10% on a 30-year bond. Apple pays 1189 based on $178 stock that translates into a 6.64% return. Let's look at another example, say uh, Facebook or say Amazon. Amazon has an earnings, well the price is, this is Apple, and the Amazon, the price is 18, 28, 3, and 28, and then earnings per share is 23.95, and then the earnings per share is a return of 1.31%. So that's pretty much as safe as the US government, it looks. Let's take a look at another example, say Facebook, 181.06. And then let's take a look at the earnings per share, which is 674, which is a Net return of 3.72%. So, how is it that Amazon can be as safe as the US government, or perhaps even, even safer? Or why is it that people are willing to pay $1,800 for a mere $23 uh, per share return um, or income every year? It's just too much. You're paying too much money for this much, very little return income. Well, that's because we expect earnings to grow. We expect there's you know significant growth opportunity, and therefore we are paying not only for this twenty-three dollar ninety-five cents of an earnings, but something significantly higher. So the price of a stock is not only what is being paid or what has been paid, but also what we expect to be paid for this individual stock and therefore we start paying more or less based on our expectation of how much the earnings per share will change and therefore if we expect a significant growth we pay actually notice in order for us to earn more we need to pay less so our expectation is that earnings is going to go up and therefore we pay more and as we pay more say 230 notice how our earnings is actually going down very much like a bond okay. so what determines the security price well the security price is determined based on the risk based on supply and demand and based on our expectation of future earnings it is this future earnings that determines or that makes the stock price this volatile. See, nowadays the discussion is about the China trade tariff, trade war with China, 
to affect all imports, all exports, and therefore um, our, our you know, top line, the revenues, and the bottom line, our net income, and therefore the performance of our company, and therefore the level of our earnings per share, and therefore our net income from the company that we're going to earn. And therefore, we are going to pay less for it. Our expectation is going down. So based on our expectation, we pay uh, a, a different price. During the day, um, people, bulls and bears, will pay more or less, will have a good opinion, optimistic opinion, and therefore they will bid it up. Or they will have a bad opinion and they will be pessimistic and they will, they will actually ask it down. So as they trade, the price will find its equilibrium based on the current financial circumstances. As these circumstances change, um, such as our expectation changes about the earnings per share, expected earnings per share, then the price will reflect that expectation. Thank you.